Like with all great inventions, we want to know what problem does this creation address and how does it provide a new solution for it and what does that actually look like? This video is a discussion exploring how the subconscious unveiling and transformation marathon journeys addresses a specific problem and provides a new solution. So if that interests you, stick around because there are some incredible discussions and explorations that may be intriguing, even if you're not interested in these journeys, just for the sake of discussion or exploring these topics, or if you're exploring mirror practices on your own in any way. These insights are also extremely beneficial and globally important, unconditionally even independent of mirror practices, as they explore brain-body wiring and how healing internal attachment systems, including through various styles of social self-engagement practices, not limited to mirrors, can create deeper transformation. And really the details of all of that stuff. It's just an incredible discussion. So attachment systems, subconscious navigation, exploring parts of consciousness, marathon practices, social self-engagement practices, healing, restoration, loving liberation, personal power reclamation. If any of these topics resonate with you, then definitely stick around. Thanks for being here and thanks for being you. Do you know her? Are you guys friends? Do you two know each other? Are, are you friends with her? Have you guys met before? Part of my divine consciousness, meet part of my divine consciousness. Other part of my divine consciousness, meet this part of my divine consciousness. Hi! Are you guys meeting for the first... You guys have known each other for a while. Oh, okay, well, this is awkward. I'm new to the get-go. I didn't realize that they had already known each other for a while. Okay, this, I'm, the, I'm the one left out. This is awkward. <laughs> On an average day of the implicit Revelations case study, Explorations with Kristen Windsor. One day, after 15 hours of consistent investment into a subconscious unveiling and transformation technique, preceded by five years of daily marathoning, the implicit Revelations case study led us here. Just some late night implicit Revelations case study notes. We've spent, uh, Quite a bit of time re-exploring all the different benefits from the transformation journey um, as it's continued to evolve and as I explored both intimate and casual social self-engagement practices through both left and right brain styled marathons, very different practices, both marathons, both social self-engagement practices, both with an emphasis on attachment well-being, um, but very different practices and very different effects and benefits also. And so as I've been re-exploring and reassessing and, you know, succinct, succinctly describing, summarizing, expressing all the different benefits from the transformation journey, which is the ongoing personal marathon practice, I've been re-inspired to explore all the different potential benefits from the unveiling journey. The unveiling journey was originally created so that I could effectively sculpt each personalized marathon practice to effectively and enjoyably create all of this subconscious transformation through the ongoing marathon practice and marathon journey. But now I'm wanting to offer the unveiling journey on its own, um, as well as the preface for the creating the transformation journey um, through the personalized marathon that would be used continually ongoingly for one to five years um, as the full feature journey. And so anyway, regardless, <laughs> um, I've been re-explored to, um, re-inspired to explore potential benefits from the unveiling journey um, because that's the time that I share with my clients and um, and for my own 
purposes, of course, for my own unveiling journey. It would be very, um, it's just always nice and helpful to summarize what I'm actually doing. Because, <laughs> like, I know it implicit, implicitly, energetically. I, I have a knowingness of it as I experience it and move through it. But to have a succinct expression of it um, would just be beneficial. And so I wanted to just take some notes of what I'm noticing and then see if it can come around and, and maybe I can even discover some new things, new benefits, new ways of using it for, you know, the greatest good. If we are looking at the brain and the body, okay, the brain and the body is what helps consciousness or the essence of the self to have a personal experience in the human form, right? And so the brain and the body and all its activity inside that we don't directly know about, but we experience the results of it or from it, can be described as the unconscious body mind. It's a body from head to toe, including the brain. It's a body. And in this body, in the brain and in the ganglia and in all the information through all of it, especially in the brain, but through all of it, your gut and all of it, there is a form of a mind, but it's not like the conscious mind. It's the unconscious body mind. And the unconscious body mind has two jobs, navigation and regulation. Navigation and regulation are the two jobs, I love you, two jobs of the unconscious body mind. The two jobs of the unconscious body mind are navigation and regulation. Okay? Navigation is accessing specific information to translate components of reality based on external stimulus and internal stimulus or internal activity and processes. So based on all this different inner and outer activity, inner and outer realities, different information is being activated to navigate personal experience and create a sense of personal reality, both inside and out, but it's all experienced inside. The way we encounter outside reality is, is just a projection of interpretation from the unconscious body-mind, so it's really all inside, actually. But um, the way we experience outer and inner realities is coming from this navigation. We can call it subconscious navigation. That information comes from the way that experiences have wired the brain and the body, including unconscious or implicit memories. So these implicit memories and all these complex networks flowing through left, right brain, forebrain, hindbrain, frontal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, brainstem, cerebellum, and connecting all this information with all the different stuff, all the ganglia, the peripheral nervous system, connecting with the gut and the digestive system and the, the second brain of the gut itself. Um, and yeah, and so it's just this very incredible thing, right? Miracle, miracle, being alive is a miracle, right? Um, but this navigation, <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. Um, this navigation comes from, you could describe it as hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways flowing throughout the brain and the body, the unconscious body mind, and it provides navigation. Okay. If you were to be like, okay, I want to shift navigation because there's disruptions of it, which is causing challenges in everyday life or maybe implicit health challenges affecting mind, emotions, relationships, etc. So maybe there's disruption of navigation and you want to resolve that and heal that and transmute, transform, restore that. Or maybe you want to shape shift and expand navigation and have the development of, you know, learning new concepts or um, expanding your m abilities for memory, um, uh, memory capacities just in general. Um, maybe you want to, um, have formulate new habits or shift the automated patterns of emotions. Um, and so there's different styles of, you want to shift your navigation. You want to resolve disruption and maybe expand into new styles of navigation. Okay. If you were to be like, okay, how do I do that? There's hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways in the brain. That means I need to figure out how to take this new information and somehow have 
new connections in these hundreds of trillions of connections and be able to access them when I want to. And, and more, even more complexly, more complexly, I would need to access the very specific regions out of all these hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways. I would have to locate and then specifically transform the, yeah, in reference to something in the Liberty Consciousness Healing Journey course. Um, specifically transform those regions of information. But how do you locate, like, maybe like 100 little strands out of hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways that are the very specific regions that are causing this particular disruption of navigation? Okay. And so if you were to look at that in, in this perspective, there's hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of information. I want to pinpoint a few hundred of them that are, or maybe even a dozen or a thousand, but still a small number compared to the totality of what exists. I need to pinpoint this tiny fraction of everything that exists and very specifically rewrite that very, very particular region of information to resolve this particular disruption of navigation, okay? And it would just seem a little bit impossible or at least like slightly challenging, right? It just like, you know, slightly challenging at least, like minimally it would be like a challenge if not like totally impossible. And then we can look at it from an alternate perspective. Okay, well, what made this these hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of information in the unconscious body-mind come into existence in the first place? Well, experiences. And where are experiences stored? Well, they're stored in memories, okay? So that means that if there's a disruption of navigation, it's coming from an experience that's stored inside of the brain and body and could potentially be, be accessed by pulling up its associated memories, okay? But there's a couple roadblocks here. Most memories exist and operate unconsciously. And so even if you can get to the conscious details of the memory of the experience that might have been the original cause of this disruption of navigation happening now, you wouldn't be able to consciously and intentionally and explicitly access the information that's actually causing the disruption because that's coming from implicit memories that are unconscious and not consciously accessible. Um, but in addition, if there's hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of information, how on earth could you locate maybe like five or even 500 specific pieces of information if there's hundreds of trillions of specific pieces of information, okay? And even if you could get to it, how would you effectively keep that information activated in a way that you can transform it? And this is where things get really miraculous and miraculous. Hard wink. Hard wink. How, even if you could, even if you could locate the very specific region of like five or 50 or maybe 500 pieces of memory data details out of literally hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways. Okay, right? Like, like imagine you're traveling on a, a train and yeah, like you've got like, you know, 50 cars to your train and you're traveling on like this one track. But then there's like trillions of tracks and there's like hundreds and thousands of trains on all of these tracks and you're trying to travel the tracks to get to a certain train but you don't know what track to take and you don't know what train you're looking for exactly <laughs> like a little impossible okay so even if you could locate the very specific oops bumping that even if you could locate the very specific pieces of memory data that are causing this disruption of navigation such as an implicit health challenge, mental, emotional, relational, or spiritual health challenge that's coming from the disruption of subconscious navigation and affecting thoughts, feelings, action patterns, etc. To overly summarize a very complex concept. Even if you could activate 
even if you could activate that very specific information, how would you keep it activated in a way that you could transform it effectively and in a lasting way where it is totally shape-shifted and that shape-shift will last the rest of your life? Once it's transformed, it can never go back into its original state of what that data was. It can never, you, you'll never regress into experiencing that health challenge again because the underlying cause of it has been totally rewritten. How could you keep that data, those unconscious memories, activated in a way that they could be effectively transformed? Okay. Because if you're activating them, then they're providing navigation and there's the disruptions. And if you move from a space of the disruptions or if you move from a space of this data being activated, the data will grow and expand. And instead of shifting its shape, it grows in its size. And this is specifically citing something that's expressed in the Liberated Consciousness Healing Journey course. If you activate the information you want to transform, transmute, or shapeshift, a lot of times, instead of shifting its shape and changing the result of the navigation experience or the unconscious body-mind, instead of shifting its shape, it might expand its size and create more of the disruptions of subconscious navigation. Okay? Okay, so if the data is activated and you want to shape shift it, the fact that it's activated makes it hard to change that information. But if it's not activated, then any work you do will be plant seeds planted into other neural pathways, other energetic pathways, other regions of information. And so in those regions of information, you are activated. You might not experience that disruption of subconscious navigation. But as soon as there's a shift of different stimulus, inside or outside, it might activate the region where it's actually coming from, and the disruption of navigation will be there all over again. And there won't actually be any change in the experience of what you're trying to evolve beyond. Okay? So how do you keep the information activated in a way that you can transform it? Okay, so even if you could find, pinpoint, the unconscious memories or information of the unconscious body-mind created from past experiences that is the core cause of this disruption, how would you be able to transmute it? Okay, so there's two, there's two challenges here. Finding the data and shape-shifting the data. Because if you reach and get data that's like been built on top of it then you still won't get to the root of it and you might experience like a decrease of the intensity but it won't ever actually be resolved because you're just shape-shifting the stuff that's been built on top of it instead of getting down to the root it's kind of like if you pull out a plant from the ground and you get like what's on the surface of the plant you visually, you're like, it's gone. There's no more plant there. But the roots are still under the ground. And when you're not looking, those roots will be like, <laughs> and they'll grow another plant. <laughs> um, it's very similar with this example of brain body wiring. And so if you are trying to get to the underlying causality of a disruption of any type of subconscious navigation, whether that's like a severe mental health battle or like, um, a less intense disruption of, you know, chronic relationship patterns um, or anything in between and beyond any type of subconscious navigation that's disrupted in any way, any capacity. There's so many potentials for that. So it's implicit health is the category I describe it as um, because there's a lot that it encompass encompasses, um, not just mental health, um, mind, emotions, um, relationships with yourself, with others, with life, with components of reality, perceptions, perspectives, um, beliefs, thoughts, feelings, action patterns, habits, emotions, sensations, somatic patterns, um, so many different things. So it's subconscious navigation is, is the descriptor all this falls under. 
Okay, where was I? <laughs> um, so if there's any disruption of subconscious navigation, and even if you find, like, associated unconscious memory somehow miraculously, even though you can't directly access unconscious memories, you might be able to access the explicit memory piece and then indirectly activate and act activate the unconscious emotional or procedural memories and then and then become aware of it in that way right okay but even if you are able to pinpoint associated information and effectively transmute transform it then there's still the root so it's like how do you get so precise that you're getting the exact cause of the exact information in hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways to shapeshift this disruption of navigation. And then once you find it, how on earth do you act, you effectively transmute it? Because if it's not activated, then you're affecting the wiring of other pathways. But if it is activated, and you're like looking at it and focus on it, then what it already is is gonna grow, expand, and get bigger and create more of the messages that it's already producing. And so th those are two ways to, to kind of look at appro approaching the problem or whatever, the, the issue that these Mirathons aims to provide a, an alternate healing path for, okay? If you're trying to rewire something in the brain, there's hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways. How do you find the right one? If you're trying to rewire memories from past experiences that have affected this wiring, there's hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways that hold aspects of memory in some capacity, but most of them are not conscious explicit memories that you can like intentionally reach into. How do you locate the exact pathway that is causing the disruption of navigation and even if you were somehow able to find it, how would you effectively transmute it and shift its shape without expanding its size? Okay. Because looking in a mirror is a stimulus that activates subconscious navigation to translate reality into personal experience based on brain-body wiring, how we experience various styles of reflections in the mirror provides clues about the subconscious navigation. And through those clues, we can unveil hot spots, which is basically a way to describe spaces of the unconscious body mind that are inviting loving liberation. That's how I summarize it. Because we want to focus on what we're creating, not what we're trying to change. Among its infinite various variable particulars, <laughs> hotspots may include disintegrated implicit emotional and procedural memories that disrupt or reduce the clarity and enjoyable effectiveness of subconscious navigation um, through automated styles of thoughts, feelings, action patterns, perceptions, um, habits, decision-making tendencies and abilities, somatic sensations, stress and trauma responses, um, etc. Um, hotspots may include regions of the brain that don't have full connections with each other, such as the left and the right brain, um, such as um, fluid coherency through the language centers, including Broca's and Wernick's areas, um, that can lead to aphasia if they're not working right. Hot spots may include spaces of the brainstem and cerebellum that don't have full connection with all the other stuff, basically. Anyway, hot spots can include disintegrated regions of neural wiring or disconnectivity throughout any particular brain body regions that need connection with each other. Um, mind body connection, including um, functionality connecting the frontal lobes with like the brain and hindbrain area with the gut, the gut brain. Three connections that need to happen that contribute to mind-body connection and body-mind connection. So two-way communication street. The mind has to communicate to the body and the body has to be able to communicate to the mind. There's two things going on. Um, hot spots could be disruptions of navigation that are affecting all kinds of stuff. Okay, so then we get into the second thing. There's two jobs, <laughs> two, two, 
two jobs of the unconscious body mind, navigation and regulation. And another way that things can be disrupted is a disruption of regulation, but they affect each other. When there's disruption of navigation, it activates disruptions of regulation. And if there's disruptions of regulation, it activates disruptions of navigation. Okay, if you're in a dysregulated autonomic state, there's more likely to be activation of disintegrated memory data. If there's activation of disintegrated memory data, there's more likely to be dysregulation of the systems. And both of these are connected through attachment well-being and the attachment systems. So there's like all these memories and experiences that have created specific information. And there's all like this abstract energetic flowing of regulation, navigation, regulation, and they are connected through attachment systems. That's their link. And all of the experiences that have molded the abstract blueprint of the brain body or the unconscious body mind have been completely dependent on how are these attachment needs doing? <laughs> are these needs being met? And if so, how and to what extent? And that determines how experience is translated into information of the unconscious body mind that creates this navigation and regulation that affects every moment of personal experience and reality from the inside out. Okay, so disruptions of navigation, and also a side potential if you want to expand navigation to new places. Disruption of navigation, and then disruption of regulation, okay? So a hot spot could also potentially activate information or, or unveil information that is affecting dysregulation. So let's say there's dysregulation in the endocrine system, for example, and there's like chronic disruption of hormones and, and all this stuff, and it really affects your emotions and your mood and all this, you know, feelings-based aspects of reality. Um, or maybe it's affecting um, hormones that um, affect sleep patterns, circadian rhythms, and um, maybe your ability to sense hunger and satiation. Um, uh, let's say that these regulatory protocols are causing cranial nerve dysfunction. So hotspots can unveil specific wiring that is contributing to that dysregulation. It doesn't necessarily pinpoint the total core causality of dysregulation because of its dysregulation is complex and it's not always related with memories and past experiences. But the hotspots can unveil regions of navigation that are contributing to the dysregulation. They may or may not be the core causality. Okay, so you're able to unveil the core causality of the disruption of navigation and how that and or how this is affecting or contributing to patterns of dysregulation. And all of this is done effectively by exploring how the hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of brain-body systems through the unconscious body-mind are providing navigation when looking into a mirror. Okay, so you look into a mirror and you're getting a certain style of navigation. And so the subconscious unveiling journey is, um, is a detailed experience that could go on for quite a while. <laughs> it could go on for hours, but you know, minimally it's at least an hour and you're exploring this concept um, and applying it in all its infinite variables of, of ways. But you're gradually exploring how hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways are providing navigation by activating them in different ways while looking in a mirror and exploring how you are experiencing recognition and resonance of your face, voice, and body. The beginner's journey focuses uh, solely on recognition and resonance of the face. And then if you dive deeper into more advanced journeys, um, a longer journey or a follow-up journey, um, then we explore face, voice, and body and how they all connect. The subconscious unveiling journey gradually explores how hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways are providing navigation.
And so we're exploring all the brain wiring without exploring the brain wiring. And we're exploring all of this vast information, including memories that's been sculpted through past experiences without exploring any memories or past experiences. And it is effective and enjoyable and emphasizes loving presence, which is also really important. Because if you're looking at brain body wiring, you're not looking at the self who is within experience. Who is actually experiencing this subconscious navigation. And the self is kind of a bigger deal than automations of, of programs, if you want to call them that. And if you're looking at past experiences or any memories, details of memory data, particulars of the wiring, then you're looking away from who and where you are right now. And both of those jeopardize the infinite power of consciousness to expand into all it could be. And so these mirror journeys emphasize loving presence because loving connection with all of yourself and grounded presence in the moment, regardless of all the automations happening, open new doors for the true essence of self as consciousness to expand into a new avenue of awareness, understanding, insight, and thus potentials for personal power reclamation, healing restoration transcendent transformation, and loving liberation. Um, so the subconscious unveiling journey allows us to explore all of that. And it applies uh, my personal dimensions theory with the concept of mere play with mere power through the, the personal dimensions theory is like an idea <laughs> and mere play with mere power is an application of using mirrors to have healing journey offerings. Um, through services and creations. And so combining those in a very, very specific way um, it has led to the development of this subconscious unveiling journey that allows us to understand what's happening. Okay, so then we're able to pinpoint, back to the original issue of what we're really exploring here, we're able to pinpoint those regions, very specific regions, out of hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways, we're able to pinpoint those very specific regions that are causing the disruption of subconscious navigation or the spaces that are affecting subconscious navigation that we wish to transform somehow. Whether that's to resolve something that's happening you don't want to happen anymore or to expand into something that you wish your subconscious navigation was doing, but it's not really able to do that right now. Um, but you want to transform this region of information that's affecting these realities from the inside out. Okay. Now, how on earth do you transform them? <laughs> okay, so that, what we just explored is... The subconscious unveiling journey. Before we dive into this, the other really powerful benefit, the really powerful benefit is we're not exploring what causes navigation and we're not exploring what causes regulation. We're exploring the results of that and gaining insight into the behind the scenes from that. But on the journey, we are indirectly exploring the thing that connects these two. Navigation here, regulation here, and then they are connected here. The connection is attachment systems. Attachment well-being is the one core common denominator. Whoa. Whoa. It's like 2.30 in the morning. I was going to go to bed at like 11. <laughs> and then I just got too excited about all this, so I kept exploring it. We love you. The subconscious unveiling journey. So you're not exploring the details of what makes the navigation. You're not exploring what is inside of the hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways. You're not looking at any memories or details of neural wiring or particulars of the experiences that shaped all this stuff. And you're not looking at regulation and what causes it. You're not like scientifically exploring the regulation of each system. But you're indirectly exploring both of them by, by exploring a reflection of how they're providing information in the unconscious body-mind. And then gaining insight into the behind the scenes of what's actually happening and how that's affecting life.
from the inside out. Okay, but through the journey, you're exploring the one thing that connects these two, which is attachment systems. You're indirectly um, or directly, just depending. The, the, the unveiling journey can be tweaked to have different emphasis or different focuses through the journey, and also depending on how long the journey is and what the intention is for the journey. Um, if you're just trying to find like as many hot spots as you can, that's different from like, I want to explore the attachment system development stuff that's affecting navigation regulation um, versus I really want to explore meeting the parts of myself who are flowing through the unconscious body mind beyond my awareness. Um, so there's three specific intentions and all of them can be explored to some degree but some journeys could emphasize one or one more so than the other or might not include components if you're really just focused on one priority there. Um, so there are three potential focal points and um, priorities, focuses of what you can gain from the unveiling journey. You can explore attachment systems, which is what bridges the worlds between subconscious navigation and regulation. And again, gain some revolutionary insights into stuff that affects both of them, but is kind of also beyond both of them. Um, because attachment systems are what allow mammals, including humans, to be the miraculous creatures that they are including personality traits. You explore that. And then the other thing with the subconscious unveiling journey, okay, so what we've explored so far in most of this discussion here is brain-body wiring affecting personal experience and how we can heal, restore, transform, and liberate that component of experience. Okay, but then the flip side of this exact same coin is meeting the parts of the self who are within experience. They are the experience, sir. A beautiful question arises. Well, if there's hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of information inside of this, is there an equal amount of parts of myself who are experiencing that information beyond awareness? And every moment are parts of me being affected by the information going on in here that I don't know about. Um, because approximately 99.08% of inner realities exist and operate beyond conscious knowledge, which is one of my many incredible um, implicit revelations through the, the journey of my work. And so, yes... There are trillions of self aspects flowing through these subconscious realms and they may or may not be connected with each other. They may or may not know about each other. They may or may not be connected with the self who is in awareness of the present moment. And all of those are important in regards of exploring ourselves, understanding ourselves, connecting with ourselves, um, healing ourselves, uh, liberating ourselves. Um, expanding into who we wish ourselves to be or who we deeply know ourselves to be. Um, it's important to connect with these parts of the self, regardless of the automations of experience. Okay, so there's all these incredible things that we can explore in terms of the brain-body wiring to benefit the healing journey of loving liberation. But then there's like this other like kind of more intimate, fluid exploring consciousness aspect of it, regardless of the human experience. Exploring all these infinite parts of the self. Um, and that might mean different things to different people, and, and, and it's supposed to, because consciousness and the expressions of it are infinite. So I, I never want to put the descriptors into a box. You can imagine that you have a hundred trillion twins inside of you that you haven't fully met yet. And they're waiting to meet you because they may or may not know about who and where you are in the present moment. And to summarize it, if there's disintegrated wiring, there's information that has content that never really got fully resolved or whatever, or it doesn't have connections with other data, neural content, energetic content and energetic connectivity of the information of the unconscious body mind, then there could be parts of the self who are stuck in that information reliving that content that isn't providing effective navigation beyond awareness 
or they could be in like an island because it doesn't have connection. So even if like the content's pretty good, they don't know about all this other stuff or all these other parts of the self or what's going on in the present moment possibly. Um, and so there's all these parts of the self and we want to make sure that they're all connected with each other and connected to the present moment. And we don't know if that's actually happening or not because again, it's beyond what we can directly immediately perceive. We can't just pause and be like, are all trillion of my parts right here? Yeah, we're all trillion of my self aspects are here fully with me now. Cool. We can't like just like know that. <laughs> and so the unveiling journey is a really remarkable, intimate way for consciousness or the essence of the self to get to know all of the parts of itself, which has nothing to do with experience, nothing to do with brain body wiring, totally independent of all of it, but is having an experience through it. So it has a relationship with it, but it is not the same thing as it. Um, and so when we activate all these hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of the unconscious body mind, we have a chance to meet the parts of the self who are associated with that information. And maybe we come across a hot spot. And while that provides a clue for the healing journey of shape shifting the unconscious body mind, the information in it, you get a chance to like meet like face to face. You're literally looking in the eyes of these parts of yourself. Meet these parts face to face. And these might be parts of the self that you never got to meet ever. Or parts of the self you haven't gotten to connect with in decades. Or parts of the self who have no idea who and where you are in the present moment because they haven't gotten the chance to catch up, if you will. Like long lost buddies, you know, like, oh, it's been decades, you know, I recognize you, but I feel like I'm looking at a different person. A lot has changed and I haven't gotten all the details about it. What's going on out there? Um, and so there's all these parts of the self, trillions, hundreds of trillions, parts of the self. And we don't know if they are fully connected with each other. And we don't know if they are fully associated with the self in the present moment. Two things there. Connected with each other, connected with the moment. Associated with all the different hundreds of trillions of parts of self. Associated with the self who is in an experience in the present moment that hasn't happened yet. The moment hasn't happened yet. And so through the subconscious unveiling journey, we can intimately come eye to eye, face to face, with these parts of the self. As they become implicitly activated by exploring the hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways of the unconscious body mind. The subconscious unveiling journey could exclusively focus on trying to find hot spots so that you have access to the activation of this information and have a way to transform it. The subconscious unveiling journey could exclusively focus on meeting these aspects of consciousness just for the sake of an incredible marathon experience that can catalyze loving liberation in your own unique way. The marathon journey could have some emphasis on exploring how attachment systems are affecting navigation and regulation. That's kind of like the, the bridge between these um, because attachment systems are really just how experiences of love have affected information impacting personal reality. And the one thing that consciousness and the unconscious body mind, or the self and this brain body wiring, the experiencer and the experience, the one thing that they always have in common, no matter what else is going on, is love. Consciousness is the pure essence of love. And attachments at the core of the unconscious body mind are just energies of love. They're just abstract energies of love. Whether they are high vibrational or low vibrational frequencies of love determines the well-being of the unconscious body-mind. And this is, again, another right here. Specifically, this is another concept that is discussed and explored, expressed through the Liberated Consciousness Healing Journey course. So there's three different potential focuses. Um, and ideally, you'd somewhat touch on all of them and maneuver to achieve the healing journey results. But you could explore... Uh, an unfeeling journey just to find hot spots or just to meet parts of consciousness, for example. Okay.
that's the unveiling journey. <laughs> that That's the process of unveiling hidden activity in the 99.08% of inner realities. Inner realities being experiencer of consciousness and experience of brain-body wiring, both inner realities. 99.08% of inner realities, approximately, that are existing and operating beyond what can be directly and consciously and intentionally perceived and accessed and known uh, Knowed about? Known about. <laughs> it's like, it's so late. It's like 3 a.m. <laughs> oh my god. So then we've found these hot spots. How do we transform them? Okay, as we previously mentioned earlier, much earlier towards the beginning of this discussion, once you activate the information, there's the risk of growing the data that is already there, which would create more of the messages that it's already making instead of shape-shifting it so it becomes something new and creates a new kind of message that it has not already been creating. And this is how we would resolve the disruption of disruptive navigation of the unconscious body-mind such as an implicit health challenge. And this is also how we would expand into new styles of subconscious navigation, including learning new skill sets um, and creating new habits, new habits. So now that we've been able to access the exact data that's causing the disruption by finding hot spots, how do we effectively transmute it? Keeping it activated because as it is activated, it is being rewired. But the way that you maneuver experience while it's activated determines how it's rewired and whether that rewiring lasts. And so if it's activated and you act on or respond to the disruption of navigation, then it grows that information and it's getting bigger and it's going to make more of those messages more intensely and more frequently. And that's how Something that starts as like a seemingly small implicit health battle can grow into something that feels disabling. Because every time the information that's causing the disruption of navigation is responded to, you act on that impulse, you agree with those thought patterns, you have a discussion with those thought forms, um, you agree and succumb to a feeling. Every time that you respond to it, which is usually just the automatic response because it's happening and you know it just it makes sense to agree with it because it's, it seems pretty strong and like reality but every time that happens that information is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and making more and more and more of those messages automatically beyond awareness and in that process more of parts of the self are not being able to be fully connected with each other and not being able to be fully connected with the present moment and that causes its own issues beyond just the obvious disruption of navigation in life. It's the more intimate, vulnerable, personal aspect of like, there are parts of me that like I can't, I can't get to. I feel like I've lost me in this process. Disruption of navigation, you can feel like you're losing parts of yourself while struggling with whatever the disruption is. Okay, so anyway, getting back to it. The transformation journey, to succinctly summarize it, I can explain this any time. I would explore the unveiling journey more so anyway. But the transformation journey effectively transmutes it because it does not look at brain body wiring. It does not look at details of memory data or past experiences at all. But while it's being activated, there is a practice of social self-engagement that nourishes attachment well-being. And so it's recreating the experiences, the type of experience that affected how this information was created in the first place and rebuilds that corner of the unconscious body-mind from scratch. Okay? The subconscious transformation journey takes the activation of these hot spots, these regions of brain-body wiring that are not doing their job to the optimal capacity that they could, basically. And instead of looking at the experience that made it, instead of looking at the memory stored within it, instead of looking at how 
they're disrupting or reducing the navigation or regulation of personal realities. We just activate them and don't look at them. <laughs> don't look at any of the information in it. We just activate them and look away. <laughs> we just activate the information without looking at it. And then we look towards the information we're putting inside of there. But instead of it being a specific message, it's actually a specific experience, which is the core foundation of what sculpts this to begin with. And because of that, it is so powerful. If you were just to take a random experience and try to put new memories in there, it wouldn't work. Because what determines how experiences are shifted to memories. Social engagement and attachment well-being. Social engagement and attachment well-being are what... It's impossible. Are what determine how this information from experience comes in here and becomes the wiring that affects navigation and regulation moving forward. So you can't look at an experience... And you can't look at this information you're trying to, like, implant in here <laughs> and do it successfully and effectively. It either won't be planted deep enough or it won't be strong enough to stick and strong enough to rewrite this information. Maybe you'll, like, plant a seed of information here, but you're not going to transmute this stuff. It's not going to happen. It just it won't. It will not. And so the transformation journey... Activates this data, but then doesn't look at it. Doesn't look at the particulars, just has it active in the background. And then there's a practice of social self-engagement. And that experience of nourishing internal attachments re-sculpts the foundation of the information rather than transmuting its detail the details of that information. It shapeshifts the foundation beneath that information rather than sh transmuting the details of its information. And when you change the foundation, you change what comes up from that. So you shapeshift the foundation and then all the stuff that's here is like doo -doo -doo -doo, I'm becoming something brand new that I've never ever been before. And gradually there are there's a, a whole new foundation in that corner of the unconscious body mind. You didn't just go in there and like paint to cover up the wall that you don't like the color of. You didn't go in there with putty and, and put it in the holes from all the nails that have been in the wall. You went and you tore down the whole wall and you built a brand new one completely. Not a single piece of the old wall is still there. You didn't cover it up. You didn't, you didn't patch it up. You tore the whole thing down and then rebuilt it. But the miracle of this is that it's a quantum leap into the ability for that reconstruction to happen because you skip the step of tearing down the wall. You just, boom, there's a new wall there. Its structural foundations have completely new material. Okay? So if you go in and you're trying to reconstruct the wall in an actual house, you can't bring in the materials of the new wall and start building, you have to first take out the wall that's there and you got to take down the wallpaper and you got to take out the wall and you got you to take out all the little individual parts of, you know, whatever makes this type of wall that it might, maybe it's a brick wall, maybe you're taking brick by brick or maybe you're taking out the wood post or whatever it is, but you have to go bit by bit and smash it and smash it and take the stuff out and create space before you can build a new wall. And so the trans subconscious transformation personalized marathon journey quantum leaps this process by building a new wall that remolds the structural foundation of what was already there. So you don't have to go in 
and take out all the information from these past experiences. You don't have to look at all these memory data. You don't have to look at all this information that you want to change to get there. You activate it and you look away from it and then you just build a new foundation and it quantum leaps you into, in this analogy, rebuilding that wall. Remodeling, reconstructing that wall. So you're not just going in there with a paintbrush and making it look different. You're not going in there with putty and patching up holes. I really love this analogy. It's a really good analogy to, to visualize what's really happening. Because the unconscious body mind can be hard to understand. <laughs> um, you're not just taking putty and patching up holes, right? Okay, so the, the, the paint on the wall that you don't like the color of or the holes in the wall from all the nails in this analogy would be the, the disruption of navigation. You're not going in there and painting in a new color. You're not going in there and doing a thing. You're going in there to build a brand new wall completely that you can then paint any color and a wall that's never had holes in it. You're not trying to patch the holes that are there. There's, a brand, there's about to be a brand new wall that's never had any holes at all. The wall of this new region of the unconscious body mind, it's never had any holes, it's never had any color. So you get to paint it any color you want, and you don't need putty to patch up anything that was there before, because there's never been anything there before. It's brand new. It's completely brand new. But instead of having to take out component by component of what makes this wall, which would be looking at the details of what's being activated when you're into this region of brain-body wiring. You kind of just like quantum leap and suddenly there's a new wall being built. And all you had to do was focus on the new materials you're bringing in. And that's what the subconscious transformation marathon journey does. You go in and you're like, there's this corner of the unconscious body-mind that I just I wish, I wish it had developed differently. I wish all these relationships hadn't created all this information that, you know, makes me have walls up or, or makes me feel certain emotions or makes me have certain perspectives. And, you know, I try to see other perspectives and feel other feelings, but it's coming from something beyond what I could just choose. It's just, it's automatic. It's just like a part of me. And I, 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 I don't know how to change that because you can't change what's happened, right? See, it's looking at experienced memories. Or, you know, I have all this brain body wiring, but I don't know how to, like, this is just the way my brain is. Like, I don't know how to actually, like, mold it into something new. But attachment well-being stored from experiences of social engagement is what brought the brain and body into existence in the first place. Developed it into what it is today, anyways, I mean. And it's what determined how experiences became memories and are again now affecting what's going on now and so maybe there's like a region of the unconscious body mind you're just like i wish it had been developed differently i wish this thing had never happened when i was two years old i wish this thing had never happened when i was eight years old i wish this thing had never happened last year <laughs> i wish this thing had never happened i wish this experience had been different. I wish that the way that this part of my brain had developed differently. I wish that this aspect of what's affecting how I interact with myself and my life were somehow different, but there's just so much. How do you transform decades of experiences that have built this brain and body? I don't want to look at all those things that I didn't enjoy in the first place and have to try to figure out how to change them to have something better now. And rewiring the brain sounds like hard work. I don't want to do that. Hundreds of trillions of pathways I got to rewrite. That sounds like an awful lot of horrible, un, unenjoyable, unpleasant work. So the subconscious transformation journey, you just go in. You're like, okay, this is the region of the unconscious body mind that I want to transform. And then you quantum leap and you just transform it. And the journey of that is fun and simple and easy and enjoyable and intimate and playful. And it's incredible every step of the way. And the journey is so rewarding that you're not focused on like 
what you're trying to change. You're focused on being in loving presence with yourself in the journey. And that's what a healing journey should be. That's what a healing journey should be. The subconscious transformation journey is a personalized marathon practice where you find the hot spots that are spaces of that indicate the activity of spaces of the unconscious body mind inviting loving liberation. And there's an ongoing practice of social self engagement through mirrors in a very specific way. And it re sculpts, rebuilds, recreates the foundation of those regions of the unconscious body mind. And it does it effectively. It gets straight to the foundation of what's actually affecting stuff and it changes it so that it lasts. The changes last. Especially if it's ongoing past the point of what you need it to be. Like if you do the journey and you start to see some positive changes and you stop, it's not necessarily going to like stick the rest of your life. It's an ongoing journey, um, which is why the original marathon prescription is intended to last one to five years um, with potential revisits to the practice of sculpting it um, or personal adjustments based on what is available through the offering of it, the service and the creations associated with it, the prescri prescription playbook. But with an ongoing journey that's enjoyable, and it could potentially just be like 30 minutes a day. Um, ideally, it might be more, but it really depends on um, the individual's intentions and present experiences and personal preferences and what else might be going on or whatnot, what they're choosing to invest in it and how much they want to get out of it. It could be, you know, eight hours a day, which is what it was for parts of me at points in the journey, or it could just be a couple hours a week. Um, but an ongoing, whatever it might be, an ongoing practice of social self-engagement through marathons with an emphasis of loving presence, love and presence. And this process re-sculpts those, found, those foundational aspects of the unconscious body-mind effectively and enjoyably and without looking at the specifics of what already exists, but just bringing in the new materials and starting fresh. You don't have to... You don't have to repaint the wall that's already there. You don't have to putty up the holes that are already there. And you don't have to take down the wall that's already there bit by bit. You just, boom, you just get to build from scratch. In a fresh little space that is the space of what exists, but without doing any of that other stuff. Okay, that's all for now. <laughs> just some implicit revelations, case study notes. I did not intend to get on here and talk for over an hour about this. But I might be a little bit passionate about this. I, it might matter to me a little bit. And it might be like my highest potential. It might be part of my high. It might be a piece of my highest potential. What the marathon journeys have done for me personally is unfathomable, unfeasible, unfeasible, incomprehensible. There is no way that I could possibly ever express what the marathon journeys have done for me. It's given me me back in ways I never could have imagined. And the fact that it was enjoyable and rewarding every step of the way while creating effective transformation that lasts and that really got to the core of everything that needed to be transformed is beyond incredible. It's miraculous. And it's, it's loving liberation is what it is. Um, and in the process, that's the other piece, in the process of um, transforming these parts of the unconscious body mind, all of the parts of the self come home. All of them. Not a single part is left behind. Every part of the self from all the past experiences and flowing through all of brain body wiring in these hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways, all of these trillions of parts of the self come home 
they get connected with each other and they get connected with the self in the present moment, fully connected in the present moment with the self in the present moment, fully connected with all of each other. Trillions, hundreds of trillions of parts of the self do that without looking at any past experiences. You don't have to go back to those past experiences and be like, there are parts of me that never got to be here. And this was a huge benefit for me because I got to welcome all my parts home even when I couldn't remember anything from my entire life. And in the process, transmute the foundation of the unconscious body-mind where information from my entire life is carried and now exists in a way that it never has before and provides navigation and regulation in a way that it never has before. As if I had always been sculpted into the unconscious body-mind that I wanted it to be. And so all of the parts of the self get to experience and celebrate healing homecomings. And it's a gradual process, but it's effective and enjoyable. And that matters most. What's actually being accomplished is unparalleled. And you get to have rewarding pleasure in the process of that. Um... And in that process of shape-shifting navigation and welcoming all these parts of the self home, you actually start to experience different reflections in the mirror and a different way of seeing yourself in a mirror. And that alone is super cool also. Witnessing my own personal journey has also been just like so incredibly epic and I'm very grateful for the ability to witness myself in it because that's an ability of the brain that didn't exist when the implicit revelations case study actually began. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, <laughs> rebuilt the brain through marathons and social self engagement practices. But these ideas, the subconscious unveiling and transformation technique... It's not stuff that I learned anywhere outside of me. There are things that I learned through my neuroscience research and insights pieced together that contributed to opening the door for possible inspiration and the direction of those insights, for sure. But the actual concepts, techniques, processes, and practices of these personalized marathons and the subconscious unveiling and transformation techniques that is behind the details of the marathons, all of it's stuff that has developed through my own implicit revelations. All of it's stuff that has been grown and developed and built from the inside out of my consciousness. None of it is stuff that I learned from an outside source. None of it. None of it. None of it's stuff that I learned from an outside source. All of it has been sourced through me. 
and it's so unique to me and my journey and I just I'm grateful because it makes it so much more beautiful to witness the unfolding of it okay I am gonna stop now <laughs> but only for now um subconscious unveiling and transformation techniques applied through intimately personalized marathon journeys um, as a service offered by Kristen Windsor with Kristen's Consciousness Consultancy, or the avatar character that my soul self is playing in this incarnation. Okay, I love you. Implicit revelations, case study notes! <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with past parts of myself. Totally gonna be fucking with his implicit revelations till the day I die. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> And there's a part of myself, 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 and there's a part of myself. There you are, and there's a part of myself, 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 and there's another part of myself. Oh. Hey, you two. What you guys up to? Are you guys hanging out? Are you two hanging out? Is she hanging out with her? Are you hanging out with her? Are you guys hanging out? Yeah? Are you guys kicking it? Whoa. I have not said the word denominator since I became me. I always know when I say a new word that I haven't said since I became me. All this left brain social self engagement practices is working. Healing my language centers even more. That's the first time I've said the word denominator. I would I would literally bet like a trillion a trillion sunflower seeds on it. I swear this is the first time I've said the word denominator out loud in a casual conversation like this. Oh my goddess. Oh my goddess. Um, oh my goddess. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, amazing. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's like 2.30 in the morning. I was going to go to bed at like 11. <laughs> and then I just got too excited about all this, so I kept exploring it. Are y'all chilling? You two hanging out together? Yeah? Are you guys hanging out together? Yeah? Are you two, are you two friends? Do you know her? Do you know her? Are you guys friends? Do you two know each other? Do you two know each other? Are you two friends? Is she friends with her? Do they know each other? Are, are you friends with her? Have you guys met before? Have you guys met before? Do you guys... Hi! Have you met before? Part of my divine consciousness? Meet part of my divine consciousness. Other part of my divine consciousness, meet this part of my divine consciousness. Hi! Are you guys meeting for the first... You guys have known each other for a while! Oh, okay, well, this is awkward. I'm new to the get-go. I didn't realize... I didn't realize that they had already known each other for a while. Okay, this, I'm, the, I'm the one left out. This is awkward. <laughs> or hundreds of trillions of energetic pathways, is, is what I like to say. Um kind of puts it all because I mean who knows what a neural network is I don't know anything about neuroscience um <laughs> I, I know a little but only a little bit a tiny teeny tiny bit um it's just from what I've learned in books and on google <laughs> so I like to call it energetic pathways it makes more sense to me and for example times when I've unveiled those hot spots I very suddenly got really wobbly <laughs> physically like standing up um well, that could also be because I was overdoing the, <laughs> the loving liberation, actually, on that one.